Okay, in the previous video, I gave a very rushed account of Gaussian elimination and sort of vague hints that somehow the matrix with ones on the diagonal is very important and we've got a system, you know, C times some column of X's equals some column of numbers. I left a lot of stuff hanging there and I would deliberately leave it hanging. Um, I think one mistake we have in the curriculum is that we make everything very linear and very organized, which is the end result of the human learning process. After you've just jumbled your way through an organic mess, you have these realizations, then you can go back and figure out how it orders logically. But presenting something in a very log logical order to begin with is remote to the human mind, it's remote to the human understanding, and gives the feeling that actually I failed as a human being because I didn't get that the first time through. The trouble is every human is going to fail at that because no human gets that the first time through. You don't naturally think of the correct linear approach. So we've got adjacency matrices for all these networks. So we saw what so a, a, the value of looking at a table of values, a table of numbers in at least one context, and where matrix multiplication makes perfectly good geometric sense in that context. We saw another topic, systems of equations, and saw again another table of values, makes sense to just work with the table of values, and there seemed to be a possible connection that actually I could think of this as some sort of matrix multiplication going on as well. And I had this vague sense that there's something about the matrix with ones on the diagonal is meaningful, and getting to that somehow, some vague sense. Approach number three, coming from another direction completely. Now, it depends on the curriculum. I don't know how this works for your curriculum, but in one curriculum I happen to be very familiar with, kids have actually studied complex numbers and have actually studied the geometric effect of multiplication and addition and all the rest on complex numbers. For example, if I take the complex number 2 plus 3i and ask myself, what does multiplication by that number do to other complex numbers? So I can think of x plus i, y as just a general point in the complex plane. And if I actually do this multiplication, I get, what is it? Uh, I'm always going to fail at this. 2x's minus 3y's, whoops, plus i times, uh, was it, uh, uh, two, uh, 3x's and 2y's. All right. Now, in my particular curriculum, uh, students have to know, they've really analyzed this thing to death, that multiplication by a complex number has two effects. It's actually going to rotate all the numbers by some angle, and it's actually going to dilate, dilate things away from the origin. And in fact, the, uh, the magnitude of the dilation actually matches the magnitude of the complex number. So it'd be what, square root of uh, 4 plus th uh, 9, square root of 13. So this represents some rotation followed by dilation by a factor of root 13. So kids are being very aware of that. But, 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 but. I can't help now, having gone through some thinking about system of equations and all the rest, noticing that these parts, in and of themselves, look like systems of equations. There's the real part is given by this formula, the real part is given by that formula. Which makes me think, given the work I've just somehow seen in, in a disparate field about network matrices and um, system equations, that maybe one way I could represent this is, is through the matrix multiplication yet again. So what I've got really got here is got 2 and negative 3, and I've got uh, 3 and 2 being applied to x, y. Now, one great big really annoying confusing point for kids when they do vectors, and I have to talk about vectors in another suite of videos or text, I'll, I'll do that shortly, is why do points x, y, normally written x plus x comma y horizontally all their life, suddenly be written as columns? Very, very strange. Got to admit that that's strange. However, Gaussian uh, system of equations and this complex number stuff kind of implies that it actually makes more sense, despite what we're doing earlier on, to write them as columns, given how we've got multiplication set up. You know, rows by columns, rows by columns. All right. That's just telling me I should have gone back and rewritten all my textbooks in the very beginning and make all points as columns. That's the organic process. You don't realize stuff until after you've done it. Of course, some reason we haven't gone back and rewritten all our textbooks in society and made all points columns. But, you know, all right. But there is a natural way to think of a transformation. In complex numbers, at least, we get a matrix times the point. So that now makes me think, maybe matrices also have a geometric interpretation. Maybe they represent, in general, transformations of points in the plane or three columns, three dimensional space. So my world is to open up to possibilities of, of matrix transformations. Now what's really lovely, if I'm really clever about this, I've still got that Gaussian elimination stuff hanging in the back of my head. And I would love it if I could ever get to a system of equations with ones on the diagonal. Wouldn't that be grand? That's, that's my dream. Well, here's the wonderful thing. 
If I look at what that is, that's just the equation x plus i y in complex numbers. That is the transformation that's taken the point x plus i y and done nothing to it. Ooh, I'm starting to understand what that means. Geometrically, it means does nothing to it geometrically. Still a lot to talk about there. Um, all right, so I wonder, hmm, multiplication by 2 plus 3i did a rotation and a dilation. I would love to turn things back to where nothing happened. For Gaussian elimination, we want to get things to the case of identity transformations and nothing happens and I can read off answers easily. So I'm now stuck with a question. If I've given something awkward, can I undo it and get it to something simple? And for complex numbers, of course, I know what the transformation that undoes that matrix. It's the multiplication by the reciprocal of the 2 plus 3i. That is, uh, was that, if I that, it's, uh, it's 2 minus 3i on root 13. I have to now know the matrix or that goes with this complex transformation, which is what? Uh, 2, well, I'll put 1 on root 13 in front. I'm assuming you guys are sophisticated viewers. Uh, I'm going to fail on this. I know 2 and uh, negative 3, uh, 3 and uh, what's it going to be? Uh, 2 and 3. Bingo. I know in some sense that matrix represents the undoing of this matrix. Now, I can play with this and realize if I multiply those together, I actually do get the identity matrix. I can go back and interpret what that means in terms of a system of equations. If I need to solve 2x minus 3y equals something and, uh, and 3x uh, plus 2y equals something else, that means 17 and 33, maybe I could take that matrix multiply by this matrix and see what it does. All right, very scantily, I'm speaking to educators right now. That's a way to motivate why you probably want to look at inverses of matrices in order to solve systems for equations. People tend to argue in the books, for, because they're just forced to do matrices, that we get the system AX equals B, and say, well, just like, you know, uh, one-dimensional cases, we'd like to find a number that the inverse of A and just multiply through. That's a little just mysterious and weird to kids. This is actually really trying to bring connections back together. A lot of work. This is not easy to set up. Don't get me wrong. But it's beautiful and it speaks to the human research thinking process. You don't know where you're going. Disparate ideas all come together and make this beautiful united whole. Complex numbers give us a way to actually do inverse or trans simple transformations. Now, of course, not all two by two matrices are actually like this. In fact, oh, actually, you know, you, it, there's lots of good stuff you can do here. For example, this root 13 must mean something for this matrix. It's uh, these numbers multiplied together minus those numbers multiplied together, square root of. So actually, you can actually use this to, to make sense of the determinant. So for example, if I had a dilation of zero, I've got no hope of undoing it. I don't know where points came from, everything collapses. That explains why maybe the determinants not being zero is actually helpful for finding inverses and for then finding um, answers to systems of equations. All right, a lot of work there for curriculum writers to sort out, but I actually think this is a good way to go about it. Bring these three disparate ideas together and off we go. We can make sense of why we even care about this matrix. And then you can have the very abstract conversation, which the Common Core State Standards require, that matrices themselves for their own system of arithmetic. And it's non-commutative, but there is a zero element. Then kids actually ask, then it's just a curious question, what would the zero matrix be for such A plus zero equals A? Kids can work that out for themselves. Um, we seem to have an identity matrix, A times I equals A. We'll get there from this work. And then, you know, we can prove that A times B doesn't necessarily equal B times A, da 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 da. So that provides a context for all that. The only thing I'm missing it right now is my discussion on vectors. So I guess I've got to do that at some point. Um, I did do a video on vectors ages ago in my life. So let me look at that video again. Maybe that's enough. But I'll write up notes at the very least on this. So with these videos, we have a whole bunch of PDF notes. I've got a book. In fact, I'll show you. Doo -doo -doo. So in my book, uh, Thinking Mathematics Volume 2, I've got all this vector stuff and matrix stuff in there, except I just realized that I really should put adjacent matrices as a front feature of my chapter on matrices. I'll put them as an exercise at the end. I'm going to rewrite that chapter, I think. All right, so um, yeah, I'll get all this stuff up for you. That's a, a path of attack for a way to get to matrices that actually makes context and meaning and sense of the weirdness of those matrix manipulations. Think deeply about this. I've just given you sort of a roadmap. Hopefully that's a helpful roadmap. You don't have to agree with me, you don't have to follow this roadmap, but I know when I do it, I do this roadmap myself. All right, thanks very much.